All right, welcome to podcast number 11 from chapter 10, and this will be our final podcast from this chapter. And in this one, we're going to talk about uh, stem cells. Stem cells are one of the cutting edges of research in modern biology, and they pack a ton of potential that could be just uh, historically changing on how we do medicine. And we'll talk about what that is at the end. All right, well, first of all, what is a stem cell? Well, as you can see here, they are undifferentiated cells. They have not gone through the process of when they become specialized. So they're just a regular cell, and they haven't learned how to become a skin cell or a heart cell or whatever. Now, there are a couple of types of embryonic stem cells. Embryonic means that they are within the embryo. So this is before you are born. So you're still in your mother's belly uh, trying to ripen up, so to, so to speak. All right? We have what are called totipotent. Totipotent means that they are totally potent. And they can become any of the types of cells that you have in your body. So they could become any of the over 200 different types. So what we have here, we only find these in the fertilized egg and in the first few cells. So if you say right here, this is the fertilized egg, this is a totipotent um, um, stem cell, and then the, over here we have the eight cell stage, and it could be 16, 32, 64, etc. Those are totipotent. These cells that we see right here can become any of the cell types that will be in your body. Right? Now, these pluripotent, pluri comes from the word plural. Let's write some of these down here. All right, let's go back to this one. Totipotent, that simply means they are totally potent. They can become any type of cell. All right, pluripotent, think of the word plural, which means more than one. So they can't become all of them, but they can become quite a few of them. Now these are going to be found inside the inner cell mass. You see this hollow ball right here? That's called the blastocyst. And then this area right there, this little lump of cells, that's the inner cell mass. And it's often referred to as ICM. This is what will become you. This part right here, the blastocyst, that will become parts of the amnion. The most famous of that would be the amniotic sac, the little water balloon that Junior's going to live in for a while until it's born. All right. Now, these are pluripotent. They, be, they can become many cells. So in this example, some of these cells of the inner cell mass have become neural cells or neurons. Neurons are spelled like this. Nerve cells. Uh, some of them will become cardiac muscle cells. Cardiac muscle cells are different than the ones that are in like your biceps and your arm because they're branched. And you can see these little lines right there. Those would be the intercalated discs or they become blood cells as an example. So as you can see here, the difference between pluripotent and totipotent, totipotent cells can become anything. Pluripotent can become quite a number of things, but not all of the things, all right? Now, we're gonna go over these potency words. You need to make sure that you know what totipotent means and what pluripotent means and be able to explain them. Because to me, that kind of smells like an essay question, not that I'm dropping any hints. All right, now you have stem cells within your body as an adult, so to speak, all right? And these are creatively called adult stem cells. Now we typically find these only within certain organs. So these adult stem cells, say if you're in a stomach, uh, an adult um, stomach stem cell can replace some of the cells that were in your stomach. And these are called multipotent. They can only become just the cells within the various tissues, all right? So they can just become many of the cells within that tissue. So multipotent can only produce the tissues in that organ. Because if we look over here in this graph, uh, mesenchyme, uh, that's just it's a type of, of tissue, right? And it is multipotent. It can become bone, cartilage, connective, or adipose tissue, which is a type of fat tissue. Right? So as you can see, this is just only able to make what we would call skeletal type uh, cells, bone, cartilage, and connective tissue. Now over here, like the brain has stem cells that can become neural cells, and the heart has some stem cells that can become cardiac muscle, and of course bone marrow can become uh, used to make blood 
blood cells. All right. Now, how does this affect the future of medicine? Okay. Well, basically, it's this. All right. I actually had a type of surgery called microfracture, and it was on uh, my knee. So we see the skeleton right here. Basically, what had happened there are cartilage pads between the top of your your femur and then your tibia. And as we can see here, in me, these cartilage pads have worn out over years. Basically, you know, 35 years of athletics, the, the knee just worn out. So what the surgeon did is he took a, basically an ice pick and he poked holes into the tip of the femur. And the idea with this was, the idea was that the bone marrow stem cells would come down and then they would rebuild this cartilage. So really what the doctor was trying to do is to unleash these mesenchymal cells to, re to replace the cartilage in my knee. And it's worked reasonably well. Um, it will not last forever, though. There will be a knee replacement in my future. Uh, microfracture knee surgery is very, very common in uh, basketball players. Now, let's look up here at the heart. In a heart attack, um, blood vessel is, is not, uh, the blood vessels are blocked, so oxygen is not getting to this heart muscle, and it will die. If you could find the way to release the power of stem cells in the heart, you could rebuild this cardiac muscle that had died during the heart attack. And that could potentially um, not have to do an open heart surgery. You could just inject the cells into the heart, and then they would find a way to fix the heart itself. So when it comes to modern medicine, stem cells have an unbelievable amount of power that could just reshape how human beings practice medicine. All right, that will con conclude our study of chapter 10. Uh, make sure you complete everything on your menu and prepare for the celebration of knowledge.